Well, welcome to the Dow High versus Midland High Boys Swim Meet. Dow High is coached by Gary Strickler and assistant coach Chili Smith. Midland High is coached this year by Pat Welter and diving coach Todd Hofer. Dow High's captains are seniors Ben Martin, Jackson Gothi, and Michael Pixton. Midland High's captains are seniors Tyler Slater, Travis Smith, and Philip Steinbrenner. Looks like they're getting ready to start the national anthem. Dow High boys are all lined up, and the Midland High boys are all lined up, facing the American flag, getting ready for the meet to begin. Tonight's swim meet is going to begin with diving first. They've been changing the format of these dual meets, starting with diving, which is normally about the fourth or fifth event of the meet. So after the national anthem, we'll begin with the diving. Tonight's also senior night. And uh, Buffy, uh, you have a senior at the meet. I do. My name is Buffy Hall, and I'm the mother of senior Tommy Hall of the Dow High Chargers. During the summer, I coached for the Midland Country Club swim team, and I currently am coaching for the Midland Dolphins, and I recently finished coaching the Jefferson Middle School girls swim team. As a child growing up in Midland, I swam for the Midland Dolphins for 10 years. So I'm very active in swimming. Looks like they're going to get ready for the national anthem right now. Kelly Finn is singing the national anthem for us this evening. Kelly is a Dow High girl swimmer. An awesome rendition. An awesome rendition. My name is Fritz Hyde. I'll be joining Buffy Hall here for the commentating of the swim meet. I'm the father of a senior high swimmer at uh, Dow High. Her name's Claire Hyde. I swam competitively in the age group uh, swimming for 10 years up to the age of 18 in both the U.S. and in England for 30 years, or 30 years ago. I volunteer once a week at, uh, when Claire was in middle school at the Jefferson High swim team. That seems like a while ago, doesn't it, that, that does you were coming to my ago. Jefferson practices helping out. Oh, uh, yes. But a lot of fun uh, teaching yeah. the kids. And look, a high school senior. Hard to believe. And uh, as, as we said, when Claire was back in middle school. Um, as Buffy mentioned, the first uh, we're going to start out tonight with uh, diving. And uh, the Midland uh, diving uh, team has three divers, Midland High. Uh, the Dow High does not have any divers, so uh, um, the, the Midland High team will start with a first, a second, and a third in that uh, event and uh, start with a big lead coming out the gate. Uh, Midland High's divers this evening are Carter Welter, who is Pat Welter's son. Carter is a freshman at Midland High. Matthew Curtis is a sophomore, and Kyle Blackwood is a junior. So they have a freshman, a sophomore, and a junior on their diving team. And uh, the Midland High team is coached by, uh, as you mentioned, Todd Hofer. Uh, he's the coach of Midland High. He graduated from Midland High in 1984 and has coached on and off since uh, 1990. 
And Todd, yeah, Todd hasn't been coaching for a long time. Todd Hofer and Pat Welter have been uh, school-age buddies for quite some time. So when Pat Welter returned to Midland High coaching, he took some time off. Carol Boychuk resigned from coaching the boys' swim team, and Pat Welter took the opportunity to get back involved. Pat coached me, coached with me for a while with the Midland Dolphins several years ago. So it's nice to see Pat Welter in the water again coaching and Todd Hofer joining him. I know uh, Todd's got some serious dedication because he drives down from Ross Common to coach the team. And his wife is a master swim coach. So uh -huh. a lot of uh, a lot of family commitments with the sport of swimming. Husband, wife, children and parents. I know that had a big thing, uh, you know, when you enjoy something as a child uh, yourself, that you try to pass that on to your kids, that uh, the work ethic and the, uh, the, the life lessons you learn in swimming, I know that was a big part of why uh, I encourage my children to swim. Definitely is a family sport, a, a community, and I'm sure the same people could say about basketball or baseball or any other sport. But, of course, I'm prejudiced to swimming, and it's definitely a family sport. There's no doubt it's a huge time commitment for the parents and the kids. Well, it's nice to go to one venue and be able to watch your kids perform together, compete together when they're younger. I also have a sophomore swimmer at Dow High. She's on her age group team right now, taking a break from high school swimming, but definitely missing it and anxious for high school swimming to start back up for her. Although my son is anxious for a break. Ah. It's a big commitment. These kids swim a lot of hours. I know when you have that break, though, uh, you get, when you come back, it's really tough to get back in shape. Oh, it sure is. It takes months. Take two weeks off, expect two months to start back up and get back in shape. Sounds like they're getting ready for diving to begin. However, I don't see the divers. Ah. I don't know if you can hear our the announcement first, there. Our first diver is... Matthew Curtis doing a forward dive in the pike position, degree of difficulty 1.3. It's important that the spectators are quiet for the start so the diver can concentrate. So starting off the first event, Judges awards, total award is 20.15. Our next diver, I don't think they said his name. I think this is Carter Welter doing dive 103C in the tuck position. Yeah, Buffy and I are definitely a little bit out of our element here, uh, being swimmers instead of divers. That's something I could not do. Good for him. Judges' awards are four, four, and four. Total award is 19.2. Kyle Blackwood is the next diver doing dive 103B in the pike position, one and a half somersaults. You know, one of the things you and I talked about at the last meet was uh, admiring people for something that uh, we wouldn't have the guts to do. I have no guts for this. I can jump. <laughs> I can dive. Perhaps a cannonball. That's all you're going to get from me. Look at the height that he got on that. Five, four and one half. Four. Total award, 22.95. Beginning round two is Matthew Curtis doing dive 102C in the tuck position. Degree of difficulty is 1.4. Forward, one somersault. Judges awards. Four, 
four, four and one half, four and one half. Total awards, 18.2. Next dive diver is Carter Welter doing dive 403C and inward, one and one half somersault in the tuck position. Degree of difficulty is 2.2. I know one of the things we've also talked about is uh, in Midland, it's really tough for a diver because there really aren't that many facilities that the only pools that have uh, diving boards in town are the country club and the high school here. And the country club diving board doesn't have that much of a spring, so it's more to play on. Where this diving board, the kids have a better spring. So this is more of a competition diving board where the, the one at the... Right, because they don't have a fulcrum to move. Degree of difficulty, or the total award is 29.7. Kyle Blackwood is the next diver. He's doing dive 201, a back dive in the straight position. Degree of difficulty is 1.7. Kyle is a junior at Midland High. Not sure if he has, if he dove before but looks like he has some experience. <laughs> Judges awards. Five, five, five. Total award, 25.5. You know, one of the areas that you may uh, recruit divers from would be gymnasts, but uh, interesting observation I'd also heard was uh, Gymnasts train, and uh, it, there's a major difference in the, the orientation. Gymnasts land on their feet, and most of the dives you see are a hand entry or head first. Well, that would take some getting used to, wouldn't it? Matthew's doing dive 51-21, a forward dive, one somersault, half twist, three position, degree of good difficulty, 1.7. Judges awards, four, four and one half, four. Total award, 21.25. Carter Welter is doing dive 511A, a forward dive, one and a half twist, straight position, degree of difficulty, 1.8. Judges awards. Four and one half, four and one half, five. Total award, 26.1. Kyle Blackwood's next dive is a 301 reverse dive in the straight position. Degree of difficulty is 1.8. You can see before he got on the board, he adjusted the fulcrum. It makes the board less bouncy or more bouncy. I would imagine they would want it more bouncy for a front dive and less bouncy for a back dive. Just a guess. He gets a lot of air. I, and I know uh, we were talking about uh, the bounciness of the board and, and whether a back dive or a front dive. You know, probably one of the most famous divers, Greg Luganis. Uh, who hit his head in the Olympics, and everyone may be familiar with all those stories, but he was in town uh, this fall, and both the boys and the girls swim team from down in Midland, I had the opportunity to meet him. That was a neat experience, and I know a lot of kids got their pictures taken with him. This is Matthew Curtis doing dive 302C, a reverse dive, one somersault in the tuck position, degree of difficulty 1.6. That was very that was nice, nice day. straight. He saw his hands down by his legs. Hands aren't allowed to be over your head when you enter for that dive. Five, four and one half, five. One of the smaller splashes we've seen today also for the entry. Judges look for that nice clean entry at the end of their dive. The highest score a diver can get is a 10. Typically at a dual meet like this, a five and a half is a pretty nice score. This is Carter Welter who just did dive 302C, a reverse dive, one somersault, tuck position. Five, 
five five total award for that dive was 24.80 this is kyle blackwood who's a junior at midland high doing dive 403 c an inward dive one and one half somersaults in the tuck position degree of difficulty is 2.2 and take this opportunity here to announce uh, th some of the repeat times for when you can see the broadcast. So you're watching the Dow High versus Midland High Swim Meet on MPS TV 98 in Midland. This event will be cablecast at the following dates and times. Friday, February 15th at 11 p.m. Saturday, February 16th at noon and 8 p.m. Sunday, February 17th at 2 p.m. and 7.30. And Tuesday, February 19th and Thursday, February 19th at 4 p.m. Total award for that dive was 29.70. For more dates and times, check the Midland Public Schools website, www.mps.k12 or 12.mi.us. The coverage of this meet is being made possible in part by donations from the subway on Saginaw Road. And we have on the diving board Matthew Curtis, who's doing dive 202C, a back dive, one somersault, Tuck position, degree of difficulty, 1.5. Matthew Curtis is a sophomore at Midland High School. Judges, score. Judges scores. Five, four and one half, five. Total award, 21.75. Our, ne our next diver is Carter Welter doing dive 203C. This is a back dive, one and one half somersault in the tuck position. Degree of difficulty is 2.0. Carter Welter is the son of Midland High coach Pat Welter. Pat Welter is the swim coach. The diving coach for Midland High is Todd Hofer. Todd Hofer is a Midland High graduate who was an outstanding diver during the days at Midland High. As we talked, they're doing things that we're brave enough not to do. Total award for that dive was 20.00. Next diver this evening is Kyle Blackwood. He's doing dive 104C, a forward with two somersaults in the tuck position. Degree of difficulty is 2.2. Anybody that's willing to do a dive with two somersaults is definitely somebody that has some experience. And somebody tall as he is also. He gets Very so nice. much height. Nice entry. It's also impressive that you notice the team, the way they support each other. I don't know if there's a you camera person who get a shot of uh, after the dives, the, the cheer that they give the Total diver. score is 35.2. Final round of diving. Each diver does six dives. Matthew Curtis is doing dive 401B, an inward dive in the pike position. Degree of difficulty is 1.5. They have to be able to do six dives in order to participate in the diving part of the swim meet. Otherwise, they would have to do XB exhibition if they could only do, say, four dives or three dives. Judges scores. Five, five, four and one half. Total award, 21.75. Carter Welter is our next diver. He's doing dive 401B, an inward dive in the pike position. Degree of difficulty is 
Very nice entry. Judges scores. Five, four and one half, five. Total award, 21.75. Our final dive for this evening is Kyle Blackwood doing dive 203C, a back dive, one and one half somersaults in the tuck position. Degree of difficulty is 2.0. If you look underneath the diving board, you see a little spout of water. That spout of water um, helps the divers to judge their entry. It makes the uh, water uh, so they can see it, so it's not a clear glass. So it's like ripply? Ripply, exactly, so they can get some depth perception. Is that a good word, ripple? <laughs> <laughs> the gives the water depth perception. There you go. Four, four, four and one half. Total award is 25.00. This concludes our diving for this evening. In third place, Matthew Curtis, Carter Welter in second place. And winning diving this evening, Kyle Blackwood with a total score. I didn't quite get that total score, 265. I'm not quite sure what that was, but Kyle Blackwood was the first place finisher in tonight's diving competition with Midland High versus Dow High. Right now they're gonna be getting ready for um, Midland High senior night. We'll be back in a few moments. Uh, uh, to join you for the rest of the meet. And when we get back, we'll be starting with a 200 medley relay. So be back soon. Welcome to the Dow High versus Midland High boys swim meet. Dow High is coached by Gary Strickler and Chili Smith and Midland High is coached by Pat Welter and Todd Hofer. We just completed the diving portion of our swim meet, and we're getting ready for the swimming events. Uh, this is Fritz Hyde here with Buffy Hall, and uh, you are watching the Dow High Midland High meet on MPS TV 98 in Midland. This event was on Cablecast, and the following dates will be the replays. Friday, uh, February 15th at 11 p.m. Saturday, February 16th at noon and 8 p.m. Sunday, February 17th at 2 p.m. and 7.30. Tuesday, February 19th through Thursday, February 21st at 4 p.m. We're starting with event one, the boys 200 medley relay. In lane two from Midland High, we have John Reeves, Nathan Nanisto, Jared Hoffman, and Joey Howes. In lane three from Dow High, Jared Justin, Nick Olin, Koki Nishida, Robert Auger. In lane four from Midland High, Sam Wing, Carter Welter, Scott Joffrey, and Leif Joffrey. In lane five from Dow High, Alec Justin, Brian Schultz, Steve Zhu, and Eric Drankpole. We have two heats of this uh, event, and the relays are always my favorite part of the meet. They start the meet and end the meet. This is heat one of two. Heat one is exhibition. That means that no score will be kept for the results of this heat. Heat two is the scoring heat. Each swimmer is swimming a different stroke. Backstroke was first. We're on the breaststroke leg of this race. This is the second swimmer. The third swimmer will be the butterflyer. And the fourth swimmer in the medley relay is freestyle. This will be the only time, uh, one of my favorite things to watch is the 50 butterfly because it's an all out sprint for the butterfly. Uh, and uh, you'll get to see, especially in the second heat, I'm sure we're gonna get to see some really gorgeous swimming. We'll see some fast swimmers in the second heat. We have two people that are running the meet in the office. Amy Strickler runs the clock. She makes sure that the clock and the scoreboard is set for the correct event and then the clock starts each race and there's a scoreboard at the starting end of the pool. She announces the start of all races and she announces the results at the end of all races. So Amy's job is quite important for the spectators. 
Randy Hall keeps track of the swimmers' times and the scores of the meet, so he's kind of the behind the scenes guy. And he makes sure that the backup timers are working. There are volunteer high school swimmers. The girls are here timing for this event. So you'll see the backup timers behind the blocks. And then of course we have an official and a starter. Lori Smith is starting the meet today. And our referee is Renee Allen. Close, close event here, looks like lane uh Lane four just touched out lane five. Actually, lane three. Touched out lane two, huh? Right, and lane three was Dow High's D team of Jared Justin, Nick Olin, Koki oh. Nishida, and Robert Auger. After the last person in the heat finishes their part of the race, all the swimmers are allowed to warm down at 25. So you might see the boys all jumping in the pool and they can swim 125. It has to be a feet first entry. If they dive in, they could disqualify their whole relay. So you'll see the boys jumping in. And uh, the two other people that are uh, key to the meet uh, are the starter and the referee. I don't think we announced those, uh, but you'll notice them on the pool deck. They're the, uh, the, the officials are in white, uh, the starter and the referee. And Lori Smith is starting the meet. That's Chili Smith, assistant coach of Dow High's wife, and their son Nick Smith is a junior. Nick Smith is um, swimming backstroke in lane one today. This is heat two. Dow High is swimming in lanes one, three, and five, and Midland High is swimming in lanes two and four. The pool record for this event is a 135.18. And I know that the Dow High boys are trying to go after as many records as they can. In lane one, swimming from Dow High, Nick Smith, Jeremy Whistler, Thomas Boland, and Ryan Quamar. In lane two, from Midland High, Jack Dooley, A.C. Crane, Joey Adams, and Connor Patnode. In lane three, from Dow High, Michael Pixton, Connor Keelitz, Zach Hoffman and Ricky Kanoff. In lane four from Midland High, Tyler Slater, Richard Dotchtick, Philip Steinbrunner, and Jay Hendricks. And in lane five from Dow High, Nick Pixton, Tommy Hall, Kevin White, and Ben Brandstamp. In breaststroke, you can see that the breaststrokers breathe every stroke. And you see that nice long glide between their strokes. That's a very powerful kick. And here's that 50 butterfly. What the, can you tell us about that? The 50 butterfly, as you said, the, uh, the favorite stroke. I think it's the prettiest of the strokes. Well, thank you. That was the stroke I swam. And, uh, the, and also, if, if you can imagine, pretty and powerful at the same time. They don't have those, sh those shoulders for nothing. You can spot a swimmer walking around anywhere with those butterfly shoulders. Shoulders and back. And here we have the freestyler in lane... Uh, well, the freestylers now in every lane starting the last leg of the race. This is an all-out powerful sprint. Very, very little breathing. Strong legs, fast arms. And from, the, from end, end to end, head down, go, go for it all. And I'm guessing by the way that uh, lane, um, lane uh, three and five uh, went back and forth that uh, this... Gary did not have probably the uh, the stacked deck for lane three to set the, the record this time. No, I don't think so either. Um, winning that event was lane three, Dow High's A team of Michael Pixton, Connor Keelitz, Zach Hoffman, and Rick Knopf with a final time of 148.60. And we talked about the volunteers that uh, made the, and the people that are officiating the meet and timing, etc. Also wanted to give thanks to the volunteers from MCTV that are doing the filming, the producing, etc. cetera. Uh, we had uh, Jim Malik, John Wal Walters, Matt Robinson, and Brett Nowak um, are the volunteers. And the MCTV staff that are here tonight are Marquita Batty and Matt Richardson. This is heat one of event two. There are three heats this evening in the 200 freestyle. This is eight links of the pool freestyle. Swimming in lane two from Dow High, we have Noah Arthur. In lane three, Matthew Brennan from Dow High. And in lane four from Dow High, Antoine Chavette. 
There, if you um, notice, if you look over at lane six, they're using lane six for a warm up and a warm down lane. So we're only swimming in five lanes today. Typically, we would use all six lanes. So they must be eliminating the warm down after the rest of the events to make the meet go by a little bit faster. Yes. I think they did that for the girls' meet, didn't they? Do you I, remember that? I don't think so. I don't remember that. But uh, hey, my memory is failing me from 30 years ago when I used to swim. But uh, it's amazing how much swimming has changed over uh, over the time. You know, uh, we. We've talked about uh, you know, the efficiency of running the meet where in the bigger meets they stay in the water and, and go off. Uh, um, I know Midland always takes pride in, in running an efficient meet. You know, Midland takes pride in the swimming program that they have developed over the years. The Dow High Boys swim team has 42 boys and Midland High has 30. So that's over 70 boys, high school boys that are participating in competitive swimming. Do you remember what the girls? I think the girls was 44 on the girls swim team, and I don't know what the Midland High was, but uh, you know, when you have 160 kids in high school competing in a sport, uh, uh, it's an, an impressive feat, and, and at a very high level. Uh, you know, the number of, uh, I know the girls had, I think, eight state qualifiers. I'm, I'm sure the boys for the uh, Dow High team are about the same, and then you, th you throw in the Midland High, you're probably somewhere in the range of you know, 20, 25 kids qualifying for state competition. Between the boys and the girls, definitely. And the two schools. At Tri-Cities, Tyler Slater from Midland High qualified for the high school state swimming in the 200 IM. I think that's the first time that he has gotten an individual state cut. And I know Dow High boys, their B relay team qualified in the medley relay. Coach Strickler is probably going to take his A team for the 400 free relay and the 200 free relay and the B team got their state cut at Miska's on Saturday for the medley relay, so he'll be able to take, that's eight boys right there for um, the boys' state meet, which will be in a couple of weeks in mid-March. So very exciting to have such great talent in this town. So we just finished up there in lane three. It looks like... Uh, Matthew Brennan was seated at a 226 in the 200 freestyle, and he just finished that with a 219, dropped seven seconds. He should be very happy with that that's time. An, that's an impressive cut. You know, we started this meet with diving, and I have some diving results for you that I wanted to pass along. Some diving scores. Finishing third was Matthew... Um, Curtis with a score of 126.3 points. Finishing second was Matthew Curtis from Midland High with a score of 141.55. And finishing first was Kyle Blackwood with a total score of 165.35. And I didn't realize all three of these boys were new to diving this year. This was their first year diving. I know we've got a familiar name in lane one in this event. In Lane one on the 200 freestyle. This is Brett Putzig. Oh. Lane two, Brigham Ostergaard. Lane three, Ben Brandstadt. Lane four, Hayden Clark. And in lane five, Bo Matthews. This is heat two of event two, 200 yard freestyle. So I know when we were swimming 30 years ago, you know, the 200 freestyle was uh, was considered more of a distance event uh, with the training that the, they do in swimming now. The 200 freestyle. At it's the an all-out sprint. It's, uh, it's an impressive sprint for that long a distance. This is a hard race. This is a long sprint. And you're going to see some really fast swimming in heat three. The pool record for the... 200-yard freestyle is a 151.02 set by Brad Craig in 2000. And, oh, no, that's the IM, a 143.68 set by Greg Strickler in 2000. So a 143 is the record to break. And it looks like the seed time in the next heat for Michael uh, Pixton is 145. So it's might within have a reach. Goal, but it's that's within a, reach, but that's, that's a, a tough. That's a tough two seconds to take two down. Two seconds is a lot. Two seconds is a lot of time to drop. I know um, my son's a, a track runner, and uh, the race that I always equate the 200 freestyle to is the 800 uh, in the track meet. It's that, it's that one that it's still a sprint, but it's almost a distance. So it's really there's, you know, uh, when you got a good, good tight pool, there's a lot of strategy that goes on. You really have to come to practice to stay in shape. If you're just a kid that comes to practice on occasion, then 
the 50 freestyle is your race, not the 200 freestyle. And you'll notice there's a lot more people that swim the 50 and the 100. Speaking of practice, the Midland High boys practice from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock every night, Monday through Friday, and 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock every Saturday morning. So that's six practices a week that the Midland High swimmers participate in. And Coach Pat Welter said any t opportunity that they have to go to Northeast Middle School and swim in the morning before school, they take every chance they can to sneak in some morning practices. Speaking of opportunities, uh, anyone that's interested in the audience uh, watching on TV, there is a uh, middle school and high school students are welcome to come to the MCTV over spring break. Uh, there's a uh, spring break video camp uh, Monday, April 1st through Thursday, April 4th from 1 to 5 p.m. at the MCTV studios. And uh, you'll get the chance to uh, make a TV show. If you're interested, you can call 837-3474 or stop by MCTV to find out more details and register. Winning that heat was freshman Ben Brandstadt from Dow High with a winning time of 207.74. Just dropped three seconds from his previous best time at a 210. This is heat three of the 200 freestyle in lane one from Dow High, Kevin White. In lane two, Rob Deep Dingra from Midland High. In lane three, Michael Pixton from Dow High. In lane four, Travis Smith from Midland High. And in lane five, Ricky Kanoff from Dow High. Michael Pixton in lane three, who's off to an early lead, is seated with a 145.68 and is trying to break the pool record of a 143.68 that was set in 2000. Michael went out his first 50 in 24.5 seconds. And yeah, you'll notice some of the other developments in swimming uh, in the flip turns, uh, the dolphin kick in and out or out of the flip turns uh, is, a, is a change that's happened over the last 10 or 15 years. Just. Uh, it's, it's amazing how you know, the continual improvements that are made, uh, that people notice how to, how to make it better and better. You'd think uh, after swimming probably in the Olympics for close to 100 years that uh, there wouldn't be ways you could improve it. Well, maybe I would have been faster if I had that opportunity to do a dolphin kick off of my flip turn. The they sure have made a lot of improvements and changes to make her stroke faster. Michael went out that 151 seconds. Wow. He's really working hard. In second place, we have Ricky Kanoff. And in third place in lane one, we have Kevin White. In fourth place right now, we have Travis Smith. And in fifth place of the 200 right now, we have Ravdeep Dingra. All five of these swimmers have been year-round competitive swimmers for years and years. It's, it's tough to beat that individual event in a dual competition because you just don't have the person right next to you uh, to, take, to take you up to that higher level. And Michael Pixton just finished that with a lifetime best of 144.71, just missing the pool record. By about a second, I think. And Ricky Kanoff got finished second with a 153.58. Kevin White, a 157.81. And finishing fourth in lane four, Travis Smith with a 20203. And finishing fifth, Ravdeep Dingra with a 20510. So all five of those swimmers will score points. Our next event is the 200 medley relay. Each swimmer swims two lengths of the pool of each stroke, starting with butterfly. 50 butterfly, 50 backstroke, 50 breaststroke, and 50 freestyle. What's neat about this race is you can really break it down into four, four individual races. It's amazing how the lead uh, sways back and forth, and uh, especially when you switch to that breaststroke leg. Um, really, really, if you're not a dominant breaststroker, it's tough to be a good IMer. In lane one from Dow High, we have Na um, Koki Nishida from Dow High in lane two, Jeremy Whistler. In lane three, Thomas Bolin from Dow High. In lane four, Chris Luddington from Dow High. In lane five, Aiden Saggers from Dow High. The score of the meet right now after the 200 yard freestyle is Dow High 25, Midland High 18. 
Midland High scored 13 points in their diving, so the swimming portion of the meet started with Midland High 13, Dow High 0. So back in your swimming days, uh, did uh, butterfly was your favorite stroke or was that the one you primarily competed in? No, I was definitely a 50 and 100 butterflyer and a 200 freestyler. So when I swam at Dow High just a couple years ago, okay, fine, in the 80s, I swam the, 100 butter, the 200 freestyle and the 100 butterfly in most of my swim meets. Sometimes a 500 freestyler, but definitely not a sprinter. <laughs> How about you in your swimming days? Uh, my favorite race was the 200 IM. And, uh, mentally, I could break it into 450s and stand on the block and convince myself I was only swimming a 50 butterfly. There you just go. just take it step by step. So you liked this race. So do you feel yourself swimming right along with them? Uh, not anymore. Okay. <laughs> it's too hard. They make it look easy, and we both know how painful that is. Swimming is one of those sports that people think, oh, I can go and swim, but when they actually try to swim a few lengths, they realize how exhausted they are. It's great exercise, though. I know Outstanding I exercise, a lifelong sport, that's for sure. I know I still continue to swim uh, once a week at the community center before work. I'm a summer swimmer. I teach all day, and then I coach for three hours every night, so by the time I get home, I need a little bit of family time, <laughs> so I find myself spending time in the water in the summer. And you're at the pool in the summer coaching, probably. I am coaching and teaching my favorite things to do. We have a great freestyle finish right here. Finishing first in lane three was Thomas Bolin with a 220.21, dropping three seconds from his previous best. Swimming in lane four, finishing second, Chris Luddington with a 221, dropping two seconds. And finishing third in lane two, Jeremy Whistler with a 221.35. All best times for those three boys. In lane one, fifth place, um, Naoki with a 228, who just dropped six seconds. <laughs> and Aiden Saggers in lane five with a 227, dropped two seconds. Five yeah, best times. And uh, where are we relative to the valleys? Are these guys tapering right now? No, these boys have not started tapering. Rumor has it that tomorrow morning will be the last morning practice for the Dow High boys, and tapering will begin on Friday for Dow High. Not sure if Midland High has already started their taper. This is heat two of the 200 IM. In lane one, Tommy Hall from Dow High. In lane three, Ben Martin from Dow High. And in lane four, Kyle Blackwood from Midland High. And in lane five, Zach Hoffman from Dow High. There's that familiar name that I was thinking. High, uh, senior Tommy Hall, I know who he is. <laughs> I think that this is his last high school dual meet, so a little bittersweet for the Hall family. Ben Martin in lane three, Dow High senior and senior captain will be continuing his swimming career. He's going to be going to Michigan State University to swim. Ben Martin is an outstanding swimmer. He has achieved a high school state cut in every single event. The 200 IM is prominently his best race. He was a state champion last year in the 200 IM and has a little bit of competition for himself this year because Pioneer High School just changed from uh, Division I to Division II, and they have an outstanding 200 IMer. That's huge competition for Ben. So uh, Ben is going to have a good state meet, that's for sure. That is some of the fondest memories that I do have is those challenges of the, the people that you kind of grew up in, over time with and the competitions and the, the close rivalries. Yes, I think that the 200 IM pool record is a 151.02. Ben is seated at a 154.37. Down at the shallow end of the pool, the Dow High boys swim team is cheering for him, and the boys in the warm down lane have all stopped, and they're all looking He's at the clock. He's going to be just off, though, I think. Yep. Nice effort from Ben, finishing yeah. first with a 155.06. It, it's tough, and especially in the individual events, without the taper and without the, uh, as you were saying, the, the fellow from Ann Arbor Pioneer to, to push him along competition-wise. Right, and finishing second was Zach Hoffman with a 208.13. Zach Hoffman got a state cut in the 200 IM at Tri-Cities a couple of weeks ago. 
And then finishing third, Tommy Hall with a 2.21.65. All three of those boys were a little bit off their best times, but all three of those boys also swam in a dual meet yesterday. Dow High competed against Bay City Western at Bay City Western. So those boys had practice yesterday and went to a swim meet after practice and had a swim meet today. So they're a little bit more tired than maybe some of the other boys. Now, did they schedule it that way, or was it a snow makeup? Or no, it was it was all scheduled this way. I think today's meet originally might have been on a different day because Wednesday's not a typical swim meet day for the high school boys. And it's usually Thursdays, isn't it? Well, usually for the boys, it's Tuesdays and Fridays, but Tuesdays. Midland Public Schools doesn't have school this Friday, so that might be why this meet ah. was moved to today. Our next event today is the 50-yard freestyle. We have eight heats of the 50 freestyle. In heat one, we have Sage Floyd from Midland High. It looks like the boys are starting to get organized for their 50 freestyle. It's a lot of heats and a lot of getting people behind the correct lane. And they may confuse us here if they combine some heats because they only have one swimmer in that first heat. That's what I'm wondering, and I think they might have added somebody. I'll have to see if I recognize anybody. Not quite sure. They've got three swimmers in the heat, so. The score of the meet right now after the 200 IM is Dow High 38, Midland High 20. All right, we have three boys in the water and I'm not quite sure who they are, so we're gonna have to pay attention to Amy Strickler when she's announcing. We have Amy in the office who's announcing all of the events, and Randy Hall who is running the computer in the office, making sure that the times and the scores are coming in correctly. The 50 free is the shortest event of the evening. Two lengths, all out sprint. Finishing first in lane two, with a 32.25. I know this is a, you've got to be able to instantaneously get up to top speed in order to compete in this, uh, this race. Looks like a close finish here, yes. Uh, looks like matters of uh, two one hundredths between, uh, um, Actually, a little bit more than that. They, they put the scoreboard and the electronic timing three tenths of a second, but looked closer than that on the camera. Okay, in lane two, it looks like we have Nathan Hoffenstein from Midland High. In lane three, Josh Duchesne from Midland High. And in lane four, Nathan Nanisto from Midland High. This is he two of the 50 freestyle. And it's only been like the last 10 years since they added, maybe 15 years, that they added 50 freestyles to the Olympic uh, events, I think. It's relatively recent. That, Didn't uh, know that. Before, before that, the 100 was the shortest race that they swam in the Olympics. Okay. If you're just tuning in, my name is Buffy Hall, and I am the mother of senior Tommy Hall of the Dow High Chargers, and I have with me Fritz Hyde, who is the father of senior girl swimmer Claire Hyde and we're with you tonight at the Midland High versus Dow High boys swim meet and we are on heat three of the 50 yard freestyle finishing first was Nathan Hoffenstein from Midland High with a 20 29 33 Seated with the 30, so he's going to be really happy with that finish. Breaking 30 seconds is a huge goal in the 50 freestyle. It's a big barrier. This is heat three of the 50-yard freestyle. In lane one from Dow High, we have freshman Luke Drumright. In lane two from Midland High, Jacob Strebel. In lane three from Dow High, Ben Monticello. In lane four from Midland High, Justin Johnson. In lane five from Midland, or from Dow High, Josh Moneypenny. This is heat three of the 50 freestyle. I know in the 50 freestyle, the uh, you know the start and the turn matters a lot more. It's probably 25% of the race uh, for some of the swimmers. The start and the turn are the fastest part of your race. You can make it or break it. If you have a slow turn, then you're gonna have a slow time. If you have a fast turn, you're gonna have a fast time, and the same with the start. 
Finishing first in heat three was lane four, Justin Johnson going a 28.01, his best time. He dropped eight ten or six tenths of a second. Finishing second in lane two, Jacob Striebel from Midland High going a 28.90. Best time from Luke Drumright dropped two seconds in lane one. Ben Monticello dropped a second in his 50 free and a best time from Josh Moneypenny. So great swim from all, great swims from all five of those guys. This is heat four out of eight in the 50 yard freestyle in lane one from Dow High, Chase Keelitz in lane two from Midland High, John Reeves, lane three from Dow High, Jake Davidson. In lane four from Midland High, Evan Haas. And in lane five from Dow High, Chris Tay. The, your kick in your freestyle is also a very important part of your race. If you look at their kicks, you can see a lot of splashing, a lot of bubbles. You want to make sure you have a strong kick and not just using your arms. We're in that 200, you don't see as much kick. So I don't want to say your legs dangle, but uh, they... Uh, they, they get a little more tired. <laughs> <laughs> and finishing first. Finishing first was Evan Haas from Midland High with a time of 27.77, a best time for Evan. And a tight finish there. That's an exciting race. That's the way you like to see it. And that's pretty typical for a 50 freestyle to see close races like that. Especially as we get to the later heats. Definitely. Heat five out of eight. In lane one, we have Christian Peary from Dow High. In lane two, Matthew Curtis from Midland High. Lane three, Jeffrey Thiel from Midland High. In lane four, A.C. Crane from Midland. And in lane five, Arturo Coyar from Dow High. Matthew Curtis in lane two from Midland High also dove earlier this evening. Divers can dive and swim. Diving is one event, so they could swim three events and dive one event and have the maximum of four events. That's pretty hard for a diver, though. Yeah. Well, just, I would rather swim. Just the practice <laughs> time. I mean, you got to find time to practice both. So finishing first in lane oh, three, Jeffrey Thiel with a 25.57, dropped wow. two full two seconds. seconds. Wow, that's really impressive on a 50 freestyle. That's kind of hard to do. I wish I could do that. <laughs> These Dow High, um, the Dow High boys practice three mornings a week before school. They practice five afternoons after school. They practice on Saturdays. And occasionally they have optional Sunday practices. They spend a lot of time in the pool. Heat six of the 50-yard freestyle in lane one, Nick Olin from Dow High. In lane two, Jacob Contrell from Midland High. In lane three, Jonathan Mitchell from Dow High. In lane four, Leif Joffrey from Midland High. And in lane five, Tyler Whistler from Dow High. I used to always say you could tell how serious a swimmer someone was just by looking at their hair. Oh, yes, you can. And boy, these boys need haircuts. <laughs> They'll all be getting haircuts next week before Valleys. In fact, the captains will take the honor of cutting their hair and they'll set up a barber shop on the pool deck or in the shower and the captains will have razors and they'll just buzz off everybody's hair. Finishing first in lane one with a time of 26-28, Nick Olin. We call that an outside smoker. Outside smoker. Usually the inside lanes they're usually seated with the fastest times and usually finish first second or third so when you have somebody in the outside heat that's an upset yeah he, had, he took half a second off that's a lot yeah. in a 53 uh, where jeffrey thiel took two seconds off the last rate that's an incredible amount of time yeah some uh, uh some people will be jealous from that huge time drop this is heat seven in the 50 yard freestyle in lane one from dow high ryan quaymar in lane two from Midland High, Adam Rieger. In lane three from Dow High, Alec Justin. In lane four from Midland High, Connor Patnode. In lane five from Dow High, Jared Justin. Heat seven of the 50 freestyle. Looks like we have another outside smoker over here in lane one. This is a good race over here. 
but lane three, it looks lane like did three, take it. Got him. Yeah. And a good tight race on that one. The 50, you know, everyone's 25s. I think everyone uh, was, with, was within a second of each other on that race. Uh, almost a second and a half. And it looks like they were all on their best times. Adam Rieger got fifth, but he's the one that got a best time. So he'll be happy with that best time. This is the final heat of the 50 freestyle. We have Connor Keelitz in lane one from Dow High, Jay Hendricks in lane two from Midland High, Jackson Gothi in lane three from Dow High, Tyler Slater in lane four from Midland High, and Nehemiah Mork from Dow High in lane five. Jackson Gothi is one of Dow High's senior captains who will be attending University of Michigan in the fall and he will be a member of the U of M swim team and he's pursuing a career in uh, pre-med science, something along those lines. I know Jackson's trying to break a record. 21.63, just off his best time by three one hundredths of a second. Not sure what the pool record is. Uh, 20.9. All right. So he was seven tenths off there. But very close, less than a second off the pool record. And the pool record, the pool record is a 21-4, oh. I think. Oh, excuse me, yes, pool record versus team record. Right, I was looking at the team records, yeah. and now we're looking at pool records. So now they're going to prepare the pool for senior night. They're going to be doing senior night for the Dow High boys. Right now, the score of the semi after the 50 freestyle is 38 to 20. And we're probably going to take a break here. So uh, signing off real quick here. Why don't we uh, go through the, uh, the replay times? You're watching the Dow High versus Midland High swim meet on MPS TV 98. Midland, this event will be cable cast at the following dates and time. Friday, February 15th at 11 p.m. Saturday, February 16th at noon and 8 p.m. Sunday, February 17th at 2 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Tuesday through Thursday, uh, February 19th through the 21st at 4 p.m. For more times and dates, check your Midland Public School website at www.mpsk12.mi.us. Um, also, we'd like to thank uh, Subway, um, Subway on Saginaw Road for the donation um, helping make this uh, telecast possible. Turning after the break here with the 100 Butterfly. This is Fritz Hyde. We're here with Buffy Hall. And they're on the blocks, ready to go. Buffy? This is event six, 100-yard Butterfly. Swimming in lane one from Midland High is Scott Joffrey. In lane two from Midland High is Jack Dooley. In lane three, Steve Zhu from Dow High. Lane four from Midland High, Joey Adams. And in lane five from Dow High, Nick Pixton. This is the 100-yard butterfly. We've got two heats of this. This is the first of two, as Buffy said. Um, and uh, as we talked earlier, I think during the IM or the 200 medley relay, I don't remember which, but uh, this, uh, in my opinion, is, uh, is, a, is a stroke of beauty and power at the same time. And this is a stroke that a lot of kids uh, don't like coach for putting them in. It's a very difficult event. The score of the meet after the 50 freestyle is Dow High 49 and a half and Midland High 24 and a half. Butterfly is a stroke that takes a lot of strength because you can see that the swimmers have to get both of their arms out of the water simultaneously. You have to make sure that your arms are even. If they're not even, you could get disqualified. And it's uh, the stroke that probably takes the most coordination and timing of where the kick is, where the stroke is, and you have to lift your whole body or upper body out of the water to breathe. And we all know breathing is pretty important. Very important. Breathing, you want to try to not be in the habit of breathing every stroke, but much easier said than done. If you can see from that finish, butterfly requires a two-hand touch. There are no flip turns in butterfly because you have to touch the wall with two hands. Butterflyers do a dolphin kick. Their legs are together when they kick. Jack Dooley looked like I think he took about four seconds off, uh, for a, little four, a little more than four seconds. Uh, so a great swim by him there in that race. Next we have Heat 2 out of 2. 
Swimming in lane one, we have Zach Hoffman from Dow High. In lane two, Richard Dodgstick from Midland High. Lane three, Ben Martin from Dow High. Lane four, Philip Steinbrunner from Midland High. And then lane five, Nia Mo Maya Mork from Dow High. And we were talking at the break, uh, Ben Martin, I think, is ranked first in the state in this event for the state meet coming up in a couple weeks. Ben Martin can swim any event you put him in, and every one of his strokes are technically perfect. He's so strong. He lives in Bay City and drives in to attend Dow High. Leaves his house at 4.30 in the morning for morning practices three days a week. That is definitely a sign of dedication. And I think he's the state champion in the 200 IM, I think, uh, from our previous uh, discussions during he that is. race. He is. He's got a little bit of competition from freshman Nehemiah Mork in lane five. Nehemiah has been homeschooled and is attending Midland Public Schools for the first time as a high school freshman. Nehemiah is going to definitely miss the talent of this senior class for his training partners. Ben Martin finished first with a time of 53.59, just off his lifetime best. Nehemiah Mort finished second with a time of 54.17, right on his best. Really, really strong freshman class. Also, Nehemiah Mork is the a great um, freshman swimmer in the senior class from Dow High is graduating 13 seniors we just saw at senior night and the freshman class that we have right now has a really strong showing. Nehemiah has state cuts in several events already hoping for a state cut out of freshman Kevin White in the 500 free. He's a second, half a second off in the 500 free. Oh. That's a long race to only be half a second off very, on. <laughs> very tough race. Speaking of freestyle, our next event is the 100 freestyle. We have six heats of the 100 freestyle this evening. If you're just joining us, this is a Sumi um, Midland High versus Dow High boys. Heat one in lane two, we have Nathan Klopf Klopfenstein from Midland High. In lane three, Joshua Moneypenny from Dow High. Lane four, Jacob Striebel from Midland High. In lane five, Sage Floyd from Midland High. At the uh, Tri-City Invitational, how did the, uh, do you know how the two clubs finished, uh, Midland and Dow, or two the, high schools? The Dow High swim team is very strong this year in the Tri-City area. Dow High more than doubled the second place finishers. Dow High was first. Heritage might have been second. I don't recall and Midland High might have been fifth out of seven. Okay. Not quite sure. Um, our next competition next Thursday, the 21st of February, the boys will be attending Valley Prelims. Valley Finals are Saturday, February 23rd. That will be the grand finale of this 2012-2013 season, their last meets next weekend. And then you said uh, the state the state meet is one week after that again state or two meet weeks? for a, sm a small group of boys. I think it will be two weeks after that. And last year, uh, I know Dow had a pretty good finish last year. I know they were top ten, but... Uh, I think they're the taking more boys this year. Uh, but uh, do, where, do you know where they finished last year place-wise in the state? Fifth or sixth, yeah. I'm not sure. Jackson Gothy won one of his races and Ben Martin won one of his races. We'll see a nice showing out of Nehemiah Mork this year. There, uh, Michael Pixton had a good um, 500 freestyle last year, and their relays will be strong. Uh, yeah, they placed first in the 400 freestyle relay at Miska's this past Saturday. Winning that heat of the 100 freestyle was Jacob Striebel from Midland High, who went a 106.99, dropped just over a second in that event. Our next heat is heat two of the 100 yard freestyle. In lane one, we'll have Luke Drumright from Dow High. In lane two, Josh DeShane from Midland High. Lane three, Chase Keelitz. In lane three, from Dow High. In lane four, Hayden Clark from Midland High. And in lane five, Chris Tay from Dow High. This is heat two. In the 100 freestyle, we'll have six heats in this event.
The 100 freestyle really is an all-out sprint. Four fast 25s. Just like we were talking earlier, if you were watching about the 50 freestyle, you have to have really, really strong kick. You'll see a lot of water from their toes. Flutter kick requires a pointed toe. Kind of like a dancer. When I'm teaching my beginning level swimmers how to flutter kick, I tell them that they have to point their toes like a dancer. And you know, most people think when you kick, that are, when they're first starting to swim, you bend your knees. But really, you don't bend your knees at all very much when you kick. Very little knee bend, especially in flutter kick. More in a dolphin kick, but not in a flutter kick. Have to have a fast turnover. If you look at their arm recovery, their hands recover down by their leg. They turn their head to the side. This is called rhythmic breathing. Some boys breathe every stroke. I'm sure their coach doesn't like that. It's better to breathe every other stroke or a good breathing technique is bilateral breathing where you breathe every three arms. And uh, the, uh, the top swimmers also breathe uh, on opposite sides. They breathe one side, then the other side so you can see the full panorama of the pool of what's happening around them. And that's when you breathe every three arms. That's called bilateral oh, every breathing. Th okay, yeah, I get you. Every three yep. strokes versus every three repetitions. Yep. Every five if you have really good lungs. <laughs> Finish, um, finishing first and winning that heat from Midland High was Josh Duchesne. The score of the meet after the 100 yard butterfly is Dow High 62 and a half, Midland High 27 and a half. I think they're treating this meet like an invitational. I think everybody is clumped together. There's no exhibition. And the top six kids um, score, or the top five score points. Sixth place actually doesn't score points in a dual meet. Only first through fifth place score points. And I think it's seven points for first, five points for second place, and then three, two, one, and zero for sixth. We have in the water right now heat three of the 100 yard freestyle swimming in lane one from Dow High is Noah Arthur. In lane two from Midland High is John Reeves. In lane three from Dow High is Jonathan Mitchell. In lane four from Midland High is Jacob Cantrell. And in lane five from Dow High is Jake Davidson. This is a 100 yard freestyle. If you're watching the screen right now, you can see over in lane six, a bunch of swimmers, they're circle swimming. They're just warming up and warming down for their events. And the actual competition is taking place in lanes one through five. The, uh, one of the things we talked about earlier is, uh, like the 50 free also, uh, the turns and start are critical in the 100. Not as critical as the 50. It's not, uh, they're both sprints, but the, the 50 truly is a drop dead sprint. I mean, you're off the blocks and going you know, even almost before you touch the water. And you see at the finish right here coming up um, where the lane lines are solid yellow. It's a good habit for the swimmer to put their head down at the yellow lane line and not take a breath into the wall. You definitely want to take, you don't want to take a breath as soon as you're ready to finish. So you, you drive, drive to the finish. Finishing first in heat three was Jonathan Mitchell with a best time of a 101.58. So you took about six tenths off. And Jonathan is a high school senior, his last dual meet, so that's kind of nice to get a best time on his last swim at the Dow, in the Dow High Pool, his last race. The boys will be starting their taper before Valleys on Friday. I'm sure they're looking forward to that. They're tired. Heat four of the 100 freestyle in lane one, we have Brian Schultz from Dow High. In lane two, Sam Wing from Midland High. Lane three, Matthew Brennan from Dow High. Lane four, Evan Haas from Midland High. And in lane five, Eric Drankpole from Dow High. This is heat four of the 100 freestyle. There's a three second spread between this heat. We'll see how they finish up. The fastest person is seated at one minute and the fifth place swimmer is seated at a 103. As our heats are getting Closer to heat six, the races might be closer together. Maybe not. 
It depends. And some of those, uh, you get those state qualifiers in there, and there, there's a little bit of a gap sometimes that they take a little bit longer lead in that last heat, I think we're going to see. And then it's harder for those swimmers to get good competition because they're practically swimming by themselves. If you look at this right now, you see the swimmer in lane one and the swimmer in lane five doesn't have any competition near them. And that's hard. Finishing first is Eric Drangpole with a 56-49. That's a huge time drop. Out of lane five, that's one of those outside smokers you were talking about. Yeah, he just dropped four seconds in that 100 freestyle. Maybe his taper already started, because <laughs> that's outstanding. Good. We have heat five. Um, up next on the blocks in lane one, we have Bo Matthews from Dow High. In lane two, Jared Justin from Midland, or Justin Johnson from Midland High. In lane three, Robert Auger from Dow High. In lane four, Adam Rieger from Midland High. And in lane five, Chris Luddington from Dow High. Probably take this opportunity also to uh, thank the MCTV uh, volunteers and staff for the telecoverage today. If you'd like to work on a show like this one, come to the orientation studio training class on the second Saturday of most months uh, from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. Next session is March 9th or May 11th. Learn more about MCTV and how you can become a TV producer and get hands-on training to become a volunteer. Leading this heat of the 100 freestyle, we have Robert Auger in the lead. Robert is seated at a 55-28. This is heat five out of six of the 100 freestyle. It's going to be right on his best time, finishing with a 55-37. Previous best is a 55-28. And uh, just like in the 50 with the 30-second time barrier, the minute barrier for the 100 is uh, a big, big, uh, the big goal to big reach. Goal. And I think to in, break a minute. in lane one, uh, lane one, we had someone, Ben Matthews, I think, just broke his uh, for the first time. He's going to be very happy. 59-53 for Bo Matthews. And in lane two, a 58-11 for Chris Luddington, also a best time. In lane four, um, Adam Rieger went a minute point seven, got a best time and almost broke that minute mark. And in lane two, Justin went a 103, right on his lifetime best time. This is the final heat. Heat six, Nick Smith in lane one from Dow High. Connor Petnode in lane two from Midland High. Jackson Gothi from Dow High in lane three. Jay Hendricks in lane four from Midland High. And Ricky Knopf in lane five from Dow High. Jackson Gothi is a high school senior. He's been swimming since he was six or seven years old competitively. Grew up swimming with the Midland Dolphins, Midland Country Club, swimming with the high school boys on the Chrono swim team. He's a national level swimmer and he'll be attending University of Michigan in the fall and he'll be a sprinter for the Wolverines. He's out in a 22-8. It helps being as tall as he is, that's for sure. He's over six feet, I'm sure. His lifetime best is a 47.20. He just went a 47.66. So right just on off his, his best. best. Nick Smith finished third with a 54.71. Ricky Kanoff finished second with a 52. Just off of their lifetime best also. Connor went a 101. And Jay went a 56. They were all about a second off of their best times. And as you said, they haven't started their taper yet, so the best times that we're seeing here could be uh, uh, from states last year or when they were tapered. You know, when they really want to see their, their times drop at the Valley meet, they'll be swimming at Saginaw Valley State University for Valleys. They've renovated that pool, and this will be the second championship meet or second year that they've had their championship meets at Saginaw Valley. It's an eight lane pool with a warm up and a warm down pool. It's a great venue for championship meets. So with a good taper and a fast pool, they'll see some nice times. And I know when we went over there, it's a, it's a great opportunity for Saginaw Valley to get the exposure to show their facilities, to, to show the Tri-Cities and people around uh, 
you know, what they have to offer from a college perspective and uh, athletic facilities and, and uh, school facilities, because it is a gorgeous campus over there. It is, they've really done some nice things. Uh, uh, as we enter the 500, uh, we've just had the first heat of the 500, heat, heat one of two. Um, and we'll, we're going to have a little bit of time here because this is a 20-lap race. And, uh, a 20-lap race will take uh, probably between six and seven minutes for this heat. And then when we get to heat two, that'll be a little bit faster. It'll take a little five and a half minutes. So that does give us some time to just talk. And uh, I know one of, the, one of the things is a topic that we've used quite a bit today. We've talked about Saginaw Valleys, and we've talked about uh, uh, the state meet and tapers. And, uh, and what, what uh, as a swim coach, what, what does a taper mean, Buffy? Right now, these boys are putting in a lot of yardage at practice. They're swimming a lot of distance. Uh, 40 lengths of the pool is considered 1,000. So if the boys were to swim 2,000, then they would swim 80 lengths of the pool. Well, these boys are probably putting in closer to 10,000 yards at practice. So a taper is when they start to reduce the number of laps or the amount of yardage that they put into practice. So instead of doing a lot of distance, they'll reduce their distance. Maybe when they begin their taper on Friday, maybe they'll do 9,000. Then on Monday, they'll do 8,000. Then they'll do 7,000. Maybe they'll do more sprints instead of yardage. They'll still be in the water for the same amount of time, so they'll spend more time working on starts and turns. But they'll rest their muscles because their muscles have been overworked, and they'll work on more stretches and get their bodies a little bit looser. So they're going to start their slowing down of their yardage this Friday. And so when they're not swimming so tired, you'll start to see time drops. And tapering is every swimmer's favorite part of the season. Would you agree to that, Fritz? Oh, yes. Uh, you know, one of the other things you'll, you'll hear is about uh, some of the other traditions are shaving. Oh. Uh, you know, the, the male swimmers uh, will, will shave all of the hair on their bodies to, to reduce the friction of the skin through the water. Mm -hmm. See, the male swimmers wear caps when they race, but when they practice, they often don't wear a swim cap. And the boys take great pride in that chlorine eating their hair. <laughs> so their hair is gray. Their hair feels like a big ball of cotton. They could literally pull the hairs out of their head, how you, you, you strip bad all, their hair is. You strip all the protein out of it, and you can almost break the hair. And they like love a twig. it. They love it. They love when they walk down the hallway at school, and all of the other students are touching their hair and making comments. So before Valley's, the boys will have a shaving party and they will shave their heads. A lot of the boys will shave their heads to bald. Did you ever do that? I, I, I coached myself for four years. I never, I never did go to that level. Well, a lot of them will go bald. Some of them might even shave their heads so that they look like Coach Strickler. Coach Strickler and Coach Chili both have a little uh, balding on the top and a little hair on the side. So. It has been tradition over years that the boys will first um, shave the top of their heads and leave it on the side and go to school. <laughs> it's quite comical. <laughs> and whoever's brave to do that. And then uh, for finals, they'll totally shave their heads bald. Or some kids will not be brave enough to have their peers shave their heads, so they'll go to the barber and get a real haircut. <laughs> we experienced that. Tommy's sophomore year, he had Nick Smith shave his head, and it wasn't the best haircut. So we eventually <laughs> had to go to the barber. <laughs> Not only do the boys shave their head, but they also shave their arms and legs. Did you ever do that? I never did that either. <laughs> to talk about uh, talk about the number of cuts and band-aids on a boy's <laughs> arm or leg or somebody that's not used to it, especially the first time. But a lot of it I know is psychological. Oh, but you do feel faster is what I understand. You dive through that water and you are you just slide right through like a snake. It makes them feel so good and so fast. And Back I, in the day when I swam, we used to put baby oil on our skin. <laughs> Can you imagine what the pool was like? And everybody did it. Well, they don't do that anymore. Yeah. Now the... Uh, um, yeah, the, the days the days of that. Uh, now, the, now is it illegal to put baby law on now? No, or? maybe nobody does it. Yeah. So it could be illegal now. 
And we used to put like Bengay on our body so your body would tingle and burn and then you would get in all kinds of sports rubs that we used to put on. Oh, I'm sure that was psychological. It's amazing how much of any sport is psychological though. Well now it's su swimsuits. These swimsuits, these technical suits that the kids are wearing at our swim meet on Saturday, the technical suit for the boys, and it's just a, it's called the jammer, it's from their waist to the knees, $265 was the price. Now it's a special fabric that's uh, super lightweight. It, it, it off I think it almost offers flotation, but it doesn't soak up any water, and it has very low, low skin friction. They're pretty incredible. They're really neat. They take about 10 to 15 minutes to even put on. You only get about 10 or 15 swims out of them, so they don't last that long. They'll I last about one season. I was even thinking less than that. Uh, I just got my, my official, I was asking some questions about that, and that was the official answer I got. So 10 to 15 swims depends on how much you wear it warming up and warming down. Most of the swimmers will warm up in their regular practice suit, and then they'll put their technical suit on for their race, but then they warm down in their technical suit because it takes so much time to put back on. But yeah. Now, when you were saying 10 to 15 swims, is that 10 to 15 races or 10 to 15 meets? 10 to 15 races. Races, yes, okay. So that's like three races in one meet, yeah. four races in one meet, and then you have, then you have finals. So that was um, heat two of the 500 freestyle. Finishing first was Ben Brandstadt with a 546.80. He was actually entered with no time. That means that he hasn't swam that event yet this year. And I think you meant heat one. Oh, heat one, sorry, that's what I thought I said. Yeah. I don't know how he got out of not swimming that until today, lucky. And Gary has a tradition that uh, everyone has to swim the 500 at least once in their swimming career. Sometimes he has a tradition that everybody has to swim every race during a swim season. My daughter was uh, signed up to swim every race, but then one meet got canceled and she got out of swimming the 100 butterfly. She was very happy because she was in it <laughs> that day. Not sure what kind of traditions uh, Pat Welter has over at Midland High. Pat Welter has taken over the Midland High boys swim team after taking many years off of coaching swimming. Carol Boychuk stepped down from coaching the boys, although she continued to coach the girls' season. Midland High has a nice addition to Pat Welter and to coach Todd Hofer, who coached diving this year. And it's, uh, I think Todd is the only official diving coach in town. I know the girls' diving coach, I think, was just a parent. Right, and Todd doesn't even live in town. He drives in from Roscommon. I think Roscommon okay. area. Up north. There you go. This is heat two of the 500-yard freestyle. In lane one, Thomas Bolin from Dow High. In lane two, Rob Deep Dingra from Midland High. In lane three, Michael Pixton from Dow High. In lane four, Travis Smith from Midland High. And in lane five, Kevin White from Dow High. And to give you an idea of the gruelingness of this race, uh, Michael Pixton is going to swim by his seed time a 500 freestyle in less than five minutes. So we talked earlier about that one minute barrier. He's gonna do that one minute barrier five times in a row. Watching Michael Pixton swim is quite amazing. He has a very long stroke, a very slow turnover, and he makes it look so easy. He doesn't even look tired when he swims his 500 freestyle, and he negative splits it, or at least a lot of the times he does. That means he swims the second 10 lengths faster than he swims his first 10 lengths. And that is very, very difficult, and he manages, manages to do it almost every time he swims it. That's a mental feat, because your, your body, your muscles are screaming at, you know, three, 400. Michael Pixton is one of Dow High's senior captains. Next year, Michael will serve a mission for the Latter-day Saints Church, and then he will go to BYU and might might decide to swim there. Michael is one of the best distance swimmers that has come out of the Dow High program in many years. He's also quite good at the 100 backstroke, but the 500 free and the 100 backstroke are too close to each other that you have to do one or the other. And you wouldn't want to get done with a uh, 500 freestyle and then have to turn right over and swim the backstroke because uh, 
you'd be a little exhausted, as you just said. That would be, that would be too challenging. You can see Michael already has a big lead. Swimming in lane five is Kevin White. Kevin White's sea time is a 5.04. The state cut is a 5.03. Kevin's goal this year is to get a state cut in the 500 free. Probably won't get it today after swimming in a meet yesterday, but after he tapers and shaves, hopefully he'll be able to get that at Valley's next week. We have a pretty, Dow High has a strong freshman class this year. And Midland High has um, a lot of new swimmers that have joined their team that are coming with a lot of talent and a lot of potential for growth. 500 free is a long race. You have to really keep your mind focused when you're swimming the 500 free. But luckily, you don't have to count yourself. At the shallow end of the pool, there are lap counters. Each swimmer has to find somebody to count their laps. They hold a plastic card with the numbers on it. And when the swimmers see the red one, they know they're on their last length. It's kind of like raving a wet flag in front of a bull. That same run, thing. Run, run to the barn. There you go. And then the starter will beep a horn or um, ring a bell or somehow indicate to the spectators and the timers that the lead swimmer is almost done. On their last two laps. Yep, they do that at 55 yards. Left. The, yep, left. Being a counter is a very wet job. If you are a 500 counter, every time they do a flip turn, you get soaking wet. When you count, it hurts your knees because you have to kneel on the tile. I noticed they've got pads down there. Yeah, they're pretty smart, aren't they? Yeah, I didn't have those back uh, 20, 30, either. 40 years ago. Sometimes people kneel on a kickboard. Sometimes they roll up their towel and kneel on their towel because it does hurt your knees. You can see the boys right there. They have, like, foam pads. And you can see as they're, they're bending over right, right where the person's flip turning and the little splash goes right all over the front of their shirt. Yes. And the same people get asked to count all the time. My daughter is a 500 swimmer, and she has the same person count for her almost every time she swims it. There's some trust there. There is. Whoever's counting, you don't want them to miscount. When, when you're on 10, they better have you on 10. Well, and that's the job of the official and the starter. They watch and make sure that yeah. the counters flip at the right time. They're supposed to flip their number when the swimmer is doing their flip turn at the deep end of the pool. That's when the lap counter is supposed to flip their number at the shallow end. So there is a little bit of skill and instructions for doing that. No, knowing the, the manner that you're supposed to do it in. Wow, and Michael Pixton already finished his 500. He finished with a time of 4.51.69, just two seconds off his lifetime best. Nice job. Kevin White finished second with a time of 5.06. He added a couple of seconds to his time, but both of those boys added only two seconds. So that's quite a nice swim for both of them. Especially since they had a swim meet on Saturday, a swim meet yesterday, and now a swim meet today. Thomas Bolin finished third with a 5.25.49. Then Travis Smith from Midland High, an outstanding 500 freestyle swimmer for the Chemex. Finished with a 5.33.38. Travis Smith has swam a lot of 500s in his day. Travis is one of Midland High's senior captains. Travis plans to attend the University of Michigan in the fall, and he is going to pursue a career in engineering. Rob Deep Dingra finished fifth with a time of 5.44. Rob Deep got a best time and dropped five seconds. I know during uh, the senior night, one of the things they talked about uh, was uh, um, the advice from the seniors to the rest of the swimmers was do your homework after school so you didn't have to do it after practice. Because th these guys pack, uh, pack a lot into a day, and by the time they get home after swim practice, there's not a lot of time when you're getting up at 4 in the morning. Especially for the Midland High, because they practice from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock. So I'd rather do my homework at 3.30 when I get home or 3 o'clock instead of doing it at 7.30 Seven, yes. after a long practice. Dow High and Midland High have to share the Dow High pool. It's the only um, six-lane competitive pool in the city of Midland. 
So Dow High and Midland High share the pool, so they have to have back-to-back -back practice times. Our next event is the 200-yard freestyle relay. There are two heats of this. Swimming in lane one from Midland High is Matthew Curtis, Jared Hoffman, Sage Floyd, and Joey House. In lane two from Midland High, Nathan Nanisto, Nathan Kloppenstein, Jacob Striebel, and Hayden Clark. Swimming from Dow High in lane three, Joshua Moneypenny, Chase Kylitz, Christian Peary, and Luke Drumright. From Midland High in lane four, Jacob Contrell, Josh Duchesne, Kyle Blackwood, and Justin Johnson. And swimming in lane five from Dow High, Aiden Saggers, Bo Matthews, Chris Tay, and Jake Davidson. The score of the meet after the 500 freestyle is Dow High 88.5, Midland High 33.5. And you'll notice uh, the lots of swimmers down at the deep end as they swim for the relays that this is a highly participative race. You've uh, got four members on each relay team. Um, the uh, 450s each and you know they're they're in the water out of the water quite quickly there's a lot going on and you really have to make sure that you're careful on your start you need to have a fast start as soon as the swimmer in the water touches the wall you want to be ready to go so if you watch some of their starts especially in the next heat you're going to see really fast exchanges and you'll notice um, sometimes in a relay start the starter the swimmer will start with their feet at the front of the block and sometimes they'll start at the back of the block. And that relay start versus a regular start, uh, the advantage is, what, about a second, seven-tenths of a second? What do they figure? Um, I'm not exactly sure. I just know it's faster. So if you're the second, third, or fourth swimmer, you're going to be faster than you would if you were the first swimmer because you're watching the swimmer come in instead of listening to the beep of a horn. So your reaction time is different. You can anticipate and, and get that. Uh, yeah, you're actually you're starting your dive before they finish the, finish the wall. Right. So your hands, as long as your hands don't enter the water, um, by the time the swimmer in the water touches the wall, you have to do that, watch that exchange. Because yeah. you could be partway in the air. Finishing that was lane four from Midland High, Jacob Contrell, Josh Duchesne, Kyle Blackwood, and Justin Johnson with a winning time of 154.15. I know when we watched the girls meet uh, this uh, earlier this uh, uh, fall, uh, they, the girls were able to, uh, there was three relay records broken during the meet. Um, I'm kind of hoping that we might be able to see a relay record broken here in this relay or the 4x100 relay. I'm not sure what the record is, but I know the boys are trying to do that. They're seated with a 127.91 in lane three, the Dow High A team of Ben Martin, Jackson Gothi, Nehemiah Mork, and Zach Hoffman. I know I can read the team record is 126.86, but the pool record might be a little bit more than that. And they're seated with a 127. Swimming in lane one from Dow High, Tommy Hall, Jonathan Mitchell, Thomas Bolin, and Chris Ludington. In lane two from Midland High, Adam Rieger, Evan Haas, Ravdeep Dingra. Ravdeep Dingra just swam the 500 free. Connor Patnode. In lane three, like I already mentioned from Dow High, Ben Martin, Jackson Gothi, Nehemiah Mork, and Zach Hoffman. In lane four from Midland High, Jay Hendricks, Joey Adams, Travis Smith, and Philip Steinbrunner. And in lane five from Dow High, Connor Keelitz, Jeremy Whistler, Ben Branza, and Alec Justin. Well, I would say they're going after it uh, with the, uh, the relay stack up that they've got. They have an incredible lead right now. They're already at more than half a body length ahead of the other teams. Half a pool length. That's what I meant. Half a pool length. Yeah, usually you measure things in body lengths and yeah. swimming for a... It's unusual to have that big a lead for this, uh, this much of a sprint relay. This is Nehemiah Mork, freshman from Dow High in the water right now. The anchor of the relay, if you watch, he's standing in the back of the block like I was talking about before. That sophomore, Zach Hoffman, in the water right now. If you look at some of the starts, you can see how some stand at the back of the block and some stand at the front of the block. 
And with a split 105-44, I think they're going to be just outside if I do the math real quick. Oh, there's a lot of cheering going on right now. I would suspect that means we've got a pool record. 127-72. And they're pointing to the record board and they're clapping hands. So it looks like we must have had a pool record just broken. So we didn't Not a team record, but a pool, pool record. record. But one comes down and new names go up. You know what, and what is incredible about that, Ben Martin and Jackson Gothi are seniors, Zach Hoffman is a sophomore, and Nehemiah Mork is a freshman. Wow, well, got a pool record, that's very exciting. The next event is the 100 yard backstroke. There are four heats of the 100 backstroke. In heat one, in lane three, we have Arturo Coyart, and in lane four, Ben Monticello, both from Dow High. Four links of the pool backstroke. Backstroke is the only event where the swimmer starts in the water. And it's also one of the big changes. I, th I think it was part safety wise, but uh, back, uh, I don't know how long ago, but 30 years ago when I swam, you were not allowed to turn over on your stomach when you make the turn. You had to go all the way into the wall on your back. And now they turn onto their stomach with one arm pull on their front. It's like a half of a freestyle arm. And they turn onto their stomach and do a frontward somersault and push off on their back. You have to make sure you push off on your back. If you accidentally push off on your stomach, you can be disqualified. So if you watch the turn right there, push off on their back with their arms in the streamlined position, which is with your arms straight over your head. And you flutter kick on backstroke just like you do on freestyle. The other one you'll notice, uh, or we'll notice here coming, especially is the, uh, the later heats, the, the length of time that you dolphin kick underwater. They may swim almost half a pool length underwater before they come up. That's why Michael Phelps is such an outstanding swimmer and the most decorated Olympian ever because of his dolphin kick underwater. Starts and turns. That's what we talked about earlier. If you're just uh, tuning in to us, my name is Buffy Hall, and I'm here with Fritz Hyde, and we are at the Dow High versus Midland High boys swim meet, the final dual meet of the season for these boys, just finishing heat one of the 100 backstroke. Finishing first place, Ben Monticello. Coming up, we have heat two out of four in the 100 backstroke in lane one, Antoine Chevette. In lane two, Eric Drankpole. In lane three, Robert Auger. Lane four, Jeffrey Thiel. And in lane five, Brigham Ostergaard. All five of the swimmers in heat two are from Dow High. We'd like to take this opportunity to uh, thank MCTV for uh, broadcasting the television uh, on television today for the uh, swim meet between Midland High and Dow High. Uh, we are on MPS TV 98 in Midland. This event will be cable cast at the following dates and times. Friday, February 15th, 11 p.m. Saturday, February 16th, noon and 8 p.m. Sunday, February 17th, 2 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Tuesday, February 19th through Thursday, February 21st at 4 p.m. For more dates and times, please check your Midland Public Schools website at www.mps.k12.mi.us. The coverage of the meet is being made possible in part by the donations from Subway on Saginaw. Um, also, the, uh, there's an opportunity for any uh, middle school or high school students to uh, come to a spring break video camp Monday, April 1st through Thursday, April 4th um, from 1 to 5 p.m. at the MCTV studios. If you're interested in, in coming to that camp and making a TV show and finding out what it's all behind the scenes for the producers, the camera people, etc., you can call 837 3474 or stop by the MCTV uh, studio to find out and register. In addition to coaching a lot of swimming and commentating this evening, I also referee some swim meets, and I refereed prelims and finals of the Tri-City Championships, and for the first time ever in my life, I had to disqualify a backstroker for a false start in the 100 backstroke. Oh my. Does not happen very often, but it was very obvious. I wasn't the only official that saw the false start, but the boys 
he was already in the air before the horn beeps. And that's a, that's a significant rule change also is there are, you don't, you don't get any warnings anymore. If you fall start um, in swimming now, I think, is it the first fall start that you're disqualified? You don't disqualify the swimmer until the race is over. You used to beep a horn consist, you know, continuously until everybody in the race stops swimming. Or if you look at the pool, there's a yellow rope Maybe they'll show us the yellow rope that goes across the middle down of the, the pool, pool, halfway across. And you drop you that. You drop it. And so when the swimmer swims, they would get caught in the rope. Well, they don't do that anymore. They just swim their race, and they get disqualified at the end of the race. That's very logical. It makes a lot more sense. It makes the meets go by so much quicker. We have heat three of the 100 backstroke swimming in lane one, Brett Pudzig from Dow High. In lane two, Sam Wing from Midland High. In lane three, Ryan Quamar from Dow High. In lane four, Richard Dotchdick from Midland High. And in lane five, Steve Zhu from Dow High. You know, only a handful of these high school swimmers continue on in college. From Dow High, we have Ben Martin, who will attend MSU, and we will have Jackson Gothy, who will attend U of M. In the water right now, we have Richard Dotchdick in lane four. He's a junior, but his brother Charles is a sophomore in college, and he decided to swim last year as a walk-on where he goes to school. And I know Chris Luddington's older brother, JT, decided to walk on a team at his college so sometimes you miss swimming so much when you move away and you go to college and you find out you have a team where you go you might just get wet again and see if you can join the team well the master's program here in town also you sometimes sometimes it's 20 years before you realize that oh are you speaking from experience uh, I, I where my uh, experience came from was uh, i started running triathlons about five years ago and that encouraged you to get back in the water Winning that heat in lane three, Ryan Quamar from Dow High with a best time and a time of a 102.98. He broke his previous best time of a 103. Heat four, this is our last and final heat of the 100 backstroke in lane one, Jared Justin from Dow High. In lane two, Jack Dooley from Midland High. In lane three, Nick Pixton from Dow High. In lane four, Tyler Slater from Midland High. And in lane five, Nick Smith from Dow High. Tyler Slater is Midland High's most decorated swimmer. He will be attending Xavier College in the fall, planning on studying pre-med. He also has a state qualifying time in the 200 IM. And Tyler Slater for years has been no most noted as being an outstanding backstroker. He's seated second in this event right now behind Nick Pixton. Should be an outstanding race between the two of them as they're only a second apart from each other. This is Tyler Slater in lane four, his last dual meet at Dow High. I'm sure that has a lot of, a lot of uh, memories for him. Tyler Slater's coach couldn't say enough wonderful things about him, what a great team leader he has been for the Chemics and what a great personality he has and how much he'll be missed and, and, on this Midland High swim team. And I noted you said Dow High, but uh, oh. Dow High is the, the same pool for both Midland and Dow, so it is the his last meet here at the Dow High right. pool, even right. though he's the Midland Chemic. Right, because everybody shares the same pool. So it's his last meet, last meet for a lot of these seniors. Eight seniors from Midland High and 13 seniors from Dow High that are swimming their last dual meet tonight. Nick, Nick Pixton took off six tenths there for a, for a 57.74. Very impressive. I know Nick time. Pixton is uh, aiming for a state cut. Not sure if that was a state cut or not, but a best time. And finishing second was Tyler Slater with a minute point 38. And finishing third in lane five was Nick Smith with a 101.24. Our next event this evening is the 100 yard breaststroke. This is the final um, individual event of the day. We finish off with relays, but this is our final individual race. Heat one, lane one is Koki Nishida from Dow High. 
Lane two, Alec Justin from Dow High. Lane three, Jeremy Whistler from Dow High. Lane four, Brian Schultz from Dow High. And in lane five, Aiden Saggers from Dow High. Heat one of the 100 breaststroke. You can see when they're doing that breaststroke, their feet stay underwater. They do a kick called a whip kick. You can see their arms also stay underwater. What they just did off the wall is called a pull out. You can see that long streamline between every stroke and you breathe every stroke. They touch the wall with two hands and do a pull out from their turn and a pull out from their start. They used to be called underwater pulls and I'm having a hard time changing that word to a pull out. Well, a pull out probably is uh, with the dolphin kick that you're allowed to do now. <laughs> right. The score after the backstroke is Dow High 111 and a half and Midland High 40 and a half. And the misperception people have is the whip kick. Uh, most, a lot of people think that the breaststroke is the frog kick, but the, the frog kick is, uh, is not the whip action that a competitive breaststroker does. Well, they kind of look like frogs, you have to admit. <laughs> Finishing first in lane four, Brian Schultz with a time of a 109.98, right on his best time of a 109.92. And Jeremy Whistler finishing second with a 110.38. Finishing third was Alec Justin with a 114.05. This is the final heat of the 100 yard breaststroke. Swimming in lane one, Nick Olin from Dow High. Lane two, Scott Joffrey from Midland High. Lane three, Connor Keelitz from Dow High. Lane four, Carter Welter from Midland High. And lane five, Tommy Hall from Dow High. This is heat two of the 100 breaststroke. And the breaststroke is probably the most inefficient of the strokes from, because of the recovery. You don't get to recover your arms as easily over the water, so you, you lose some of that propulsion. Breaststroke is hard on your knees, the way you bend your knees. And again, you spend that, that pull out, as you said, from the, the start. You're, you're almost halfway down the pool before you're up and above the water and swimming. Well, and then you have to hold your breath underwater after you're already exhausted from swimming your length. And then you have to do a pull out underwater and hold your breath for another couple seconds. That's why sometimes people have really short pull outs, which you don't want to have. But and, you're out of breath. And you're only allowed one, one arm pull and one leg kick underwater. You right, and you are allowed to do a dolphin kick. Right when you're pulling your hands down to your leg, you can do a dolphin kick. And uh, That's a newer rule, probably within, I don't know, five, eight years people have been doing that. So it hasn't been around for that long. Connor Keelitz is leading in lane three. He's seated at a 105.44. I know the state cut in this event is a 104. He's trying to get that 104. Hopefully he'll be able to get that 104 at Valleys because he's just gonna miss it today with a 106.66. Finishing second in lane one, Nick Olin with a 110.05 and finishing third, Tommy Hall with a 110.69. So all three of those boys are a little bit off their best time. In lane four, Carter Welter finished fourth with a 118.89 and he added just a couple of tenths. We're gonna have three heats of relays. The 400 freestyle relay is the final event of the evening. And in heat one from Dow High in lane three, we have Ryan Quamar, Jared Justin, Eric Drankpole, and Aiden Saggers. In lane four, from Midland High, Sam Wing, Sage Floyd, Joey House, and Jacob Strebel. The score of the meet after the 100 breaststroke is Midland High 42 and a half, Dow High 124 and a half. We're waiting to get heat one started. It takes a little bit of organizing to get four guys already or four swimmers already behind <laughs> the block and figure out the order. The swimmers have to swim in the order that it appears on the heat sheet. If they mix, out their, mix up their order without telling anybody, they could disqualify their whole relay. I did not know that. That's a new rule. That's when what happens when you have an official as the announcer. <laughs> <laughs> when you go to a championship meet, the coaches will have a relay card. 
and if they want to change their order, then they have to write it down on a relay card and turn it in to the announcer so it gets put into the computer properly. If they don't do that, then they can be disqualified. That's why a lot of times at championship meets, they'll just say relay A, relay B, relay C, and they won't even list any names. They kind of play mind games, the coaches with each other. They don't want to tell who's on their relay. Or they might list eight relay swimmers and then decide who is performing well that day and then choose their relay from that. Because yeah, there is some strategy on who's going first, who's going second, whether you're in the lead, right in the wake of the person next to you. Um, I think probably one of the more famous ones was uh, in China, the Michael Phelps, when the, the, the last guy to swim a phenomenal last, I think that was the 4x100 if I remember correct. Uh, I don't remember the gentleman's name, but uh, he started probably almost a full seconds behind the, the individual and had to swim better than a personal best in order to, to ca capture the lead. And, and they and, pulled and it off, the, didn't Just they? barely. Yep, by a fingernail. So Michael Phelps is what was his eighth gold really was kind of won by somebody else, but even though he was a part of that. Hey, it takes four to make a relay. Exactly. You're a, you're a team, but I know what you're saying. Traditionally in a relay, a coach will put the fastest person as the anchor, the second fastest goes first, and then the coach has to decide the third and fourth swimmer how you're going to put them, whether you're going to put third, the, yeah. the second and third swimmer, if you're going to put the slowest person second or the slowest person third. I think it's hard to put the slowest person on a relay third because that's a lot of responsibility for the anchor, but a lot of coaches put the slowest person third. Sometimes. Because they want to give the biggest lead to the slowest person. Sometimes coaches like to put their relay fastest to slowest, which is very hard for the slowest person to go last, <laughs> but it encourages or pushes that swimmer to go faster. So that's a strategy I've seen sometimes. And as a parent of that fourth swimmer, that's a lot of pressure even for the parents sitting in the bleachers. And I'd rather be the when you're when, I'd rather be the hunter than the hunted yeah. when you're coming down to that last race. As as was the case in the uh, Chinese Olympics, the the uh, the U.S. was the hunter, and I think it was the French. I think it's who we beat in the uh, the finals of that race. Uh, All different strategies that coaches play. And sometimes they will change it last minute on their coaching card and leave everybody in the dark. Not, not that a coach would ever play mind games. Oh, no. You saw that start right there. This, um, the swimmer started at the back of the block, and they took a step forward. That takes a lot of practice. These guys spend some time practicing. I'm not sure if both teams are doing that or if just a few swimmers are doing that. It would take a lot of practice for me, something new. I know that was always a fun part of practice is when you did relays. Oh, uh, relays are very, very fun. During the, during the taper period, you were, we were talking earlier that uh, the taper period can also be quite fun. Um, you know, it's a very serious thing, but uh, there, there are more, uh, there's more time and more rest between uh, some of the activities that you're doing uh, that allow a little bit more fun in practice. Relays with Coach Allen. Renee Allen is one of the officials this evening, and she is also the assistant girls swim coach. And relays with Coach Allen are the most fun because she keeps score. And the winner of her relays, she always buys them candy bars, or she used to call them pizza relays, and she would bring a pizza to uh. the girls that won the relay. So whenever it's relay day for her, then it's always fun. I'm not quite sure. I think the boys would probably rather have some water polo time. I think that's something that they would look forward to. I know uh, 27 years ago we formed a water polo league in here in Midland, but it's now defunct. The goals are still here. They, they, the, the, the high school boys swim team still uses the goals from the community center water, league, water polo league. I remember there used to be water polo for adults. So now any adults that want to get in the water, then they can join the Midland Masters. Yes. Or go lap swimming at the Midland Community Center. Todd Hofer's wife, actually, uh, and I, I don't know her. Wheezy. Actually, Wheezy. Louise. Louise. But everybody but calls her Wheezy. Was actually the referee of that small world. Yes. It's definitely a family, family sports. Well, at the time we played uh, water polo, I'm going to say probably 50% uh, of the people were young singles just out looking for 
uh, a fun and different sport to play. See, my husband didn't grow up with swimming except for he has been definitely uh, very, very involved. He spends all of his time running the meets and working in the office, and we couldn't do it without him. <laughs> so He's the organizer. He sure is. He runs age group meets and USS meets, and he's the guy behind the computer. And yeah. uh, I'll give you a Pulp Fiction uh, reference. He's the cleaner. All right. He's the one that makes it all better. There you go. We have heat two of event 12, 400 yard freestyle relay. Swimming in lane one from Midland High, Nathan Nisto, Nathan Klopfenstein, Jared Holman, and Caden Clark. Swimming in lane two from Midland High, Leif Joffrey, Josh DeShane, Jacob Contrell, and Kyle, Kyle Blackwood. In lane three from Dow High, Tyler Whistler, Matthew Brennan, Brett Putzig, Arturo Coyar. In lane four from Midland High, Adam Rieger, John Reeves, Justin Johnson, and Evan Haas. In lane five from Dow High, Ben Monticello, Steve Zhu, Noah Arthur, and Antoine Chevette. This is heat two of the 400 yard freestyle relay. This is our second to last race of the evening. And I know that Midland High and Dow High has uh, dessert and cake for to honor the seniors this evening. Tonight was senior night for the Midland High boys and Dow High boys. Midland High has eight graduating seniors this year with senior captains uh, Tyler Slater, Travis Smith, and Philip Steinbrenner. Tyler's going to be going to Xavier University. Travis is going to be attending University of Michigan, and Philip is going to be attending Michigan State University. All big name schools. Smart kids. I don't know. There's something about swimmers and work ethic. And work ethic. They train hard. They work hard. Uh, and you have a college freshman next year who's going to be attending University of Michigan, I understand. Yes, uh, very proud of that. That's my alma mater. Go Blue. Mine too. Uh, from Dow High, we had 13 seniors graduate. Senior Captain Ben Martin will be attending Michigan State University. Senior Captain Jackson Gothy will be attending University of Michigan. And Senior Captain Michael Pixton will be going on a uh, mission trip for the Latter-day Saints Church. Would also like to take this opportunity again to thank the volunteers from the MCTV um, that are helping us put this production on today. Uh, Jim Malik, John Walters, uh, Matt Robison, Brett Nowak, and the MCTV staff, uh, uh, Matika Batty and Matt Richardson. Couldn't do that without them, so thank you very much to MCTV for publicizing swimming in the town of Midland and bringing this great event of the Midland Dow Boys Swim Meet. We definitely have, uh, you know, we've had, uh, I know uh, recently uh, Brad Craig, we've had uh, Jessica Olymp Hoida. Uh, Olympic qualifier, not Olympic qualifiers, but qualified for the Olympic trials. Um, and you know, we've talked about the state champions. Uh, we definitely have some tradition here in town, you know, all the way back to the program that you teach through the middle school, back to the Midland Dolphins that we're very blessed with uh, some very, very, very competitive uh, swimming and a uh, high level of competition here in town. It's nice to get some publicity for this sport. We have over 200 kids swimming for the Midland Dolphins right now. We had 130 girls on the middle school swim team. We have over 70 boys swimming here tonight. We had over 80 high school girls this fall. We have another you know, 40 plus kids that are swimming with the high school team with Kronos. We have you know, swimmer swimming Midland Masters. Swimming in Midland is definitely, continues to be a popular sporting event. We have college level swimmers. We have Summer Strickler, Megan Richardson, Jessica Hoyta, Stephanie Siebert, uh, Paige Savely, who are all currently swimming in college. Kara Gordon is swimming in college. And then we have um, a handful of boys who will be starting in the fall. It's nice for MCTV to be willing to come out this evening. It's a lot for them to set up and prepare and publicize this. I know they were the the volunteer crew was here at four o'clock this afternoon to set up, and uh, you know we're pushing nine o'clock right now. So they've had a you know, five-hour day on top of their regular day to come volunteer to to share this with you all. And Fritz Hyde, thank you for giving up your night and coming here to. 
support the Dow High boys and Midland High boys swim meet. It's my pleasure. It's nice to reminisce. And I would have come here anyway since I have a high school senior. <laughs> kind of bittersweet for me since this is his last his well, last stool meet in this pool. Now Lauren is a sophomore. Yes, she I have a high school sophomore, so I have a couple more years. Finishing first in heat two of the 400 freestyle relay was lane three, the team of Tyler Whistler, Matthew Brennan, Brett Putzig, and Arturo Coyar from Dow High with a time of 4.07. 25. Our next heat will be heat three, and I believe that lane three from Dow High will be trying to break another pool record. Their C time is a 3.11, but the record, I believe, is a 3.09. 309.24 is the uh, team record. I would expect the pool record might be a second or two more than that. But uh, that, that's what we'll be looking for these guys to try to beat the you know, somewhere down the 310 range to, to break the pool record and a 309 to, to pull another plaque off that record board and put their names up there. And my eyesight's not that great. So. It's really small print. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to do an estimation. I can definitely tell you the the, the team record or the uh, high school record for Dow High is 309.24. I can't tell you the pool record, unfortunately. And this group of boys competed at the Miska Meet, which is, uh, I don't know what it stands for. Oh, there they, they're shining it in. Oh, they took it off right now, so I don't know what that means. I can't read it. Um, the Miska Meet is a swim coaches meet. It's the all of the um, Division One, Division Two, and Division Three teams from the state of Michigan participated in a meet on Saturday, and this group of boys won that race. So today in lane one from Dow High, we have Chris Ludington, Ringham Ostergaard, Jeffrey Thiel, and Robert Auger. In lane two from Midland High, Joey Adams, Jack Dooley, Richard Dotchdick, and Rob Deep Dingra. In lane three from Dow High, Ben Martin, Nehemiah Mork, Michael Pixton, and Jackson Gothi. In lane four from Midland High, Philip Steinbrunner, AC Crane, Travis Smith, and Tyler Slater. Looks like the three captains all together on one relay. In lane five from Dow High, Nick Pixton, Nick Smith, Kevin White, and Rick Kanoff. This is the final event of the evening. You're watching the Midland High versus Dow High boys swim meet. The Dow High boys in lane three will probably more than lap the other teams. They're that much, um, that much uh, faster. These boys in lane three have been swimming, age group swimming, since they started school, probably since preschool and kindergarten, they've been in the water. In the water right now in lane three is Nehemiah Mork. Nehemiah is a freshman at Dow High. Nehemiah will be attending the state meet this um, March. He has several state cuts. Not sure what events coach will decide to put him in. And I know uh, relays, uh, you know, they're the, probably, you know, for a dual meet, that, that's where all the excitement is. Um, you know, number one, we, we've been talking about pool records. It's, it's, uh, it's the best example of team, the word team in swimming, where you've got the four people making it up. We talked about the, the U.S. team beating the French team. The, um, and also they scored double points on the relay, if I remember if that's correct. Right, and in a dual meet like this, only first, second, and third place score points. Fourth, so fifth, and sixth don't even score points. And one team, if one team were to win first, second, and third, they're not allowed to score all three points. You can only score two of your three relays. And this is the big wrap-up for tonight. It's the last heat of the last event. And this will probably be a good opportunity to give you the times for the, the uh, cable cast. Uh, you can watch this again if you'd like. Uh, Friday, February 15th on MPS TV 98 in Midland. Uh, this is the Dow versus Midland High swim meet. The times to see that replay are Friday, February 15th at 11 p.m., Saturday, February 16th at noon and 8 p.m., Sunday, February 17th, 2 p.m. and 7.30 p.m., and then Tuesday, February 19th through Thursday, February 21st at 4 p.m. Jackson Gothi is leading lane three. He's already lapped the other swimmers. He's on his last 50 of this event. 
In the last swimmers, we have Tyler Slater up on the block in lane four, senior captain, diving in for his last race in the Dow High Pool. All right, this is a good 310, finish. 310, 311, 312. I, I think they're going to be just. Well, 313, 34, not sure. I hear a lot of cheering and clapping. I don't know what the pool record is. I'm guessing it's a little bit less than that. It wasn't quite as loud as when they took the record in the uh, 200 relay. So I'm guessing not. Well, they went a 311, so it's a little bit off what they swam on Saturday. However, they were swimming at Eastern Michigan University, which is a 10-lane pool, 10-lane uh, 50-meter pool. So they have a lot of warm-up and warm-down, kind of like Saginaw Valley is. That's an impressive facility down there. I know it's one of the better uh, schools in the MAC for uh, a swimming program. It's a really nice venue for swim meets. Finishing second was Dow High with a time of 341. And finishing third, Midland Highs B team with Joey Adams, Jack Dooley, Richard Dotchtick, and Rob Deep Dingra. Oh, they did break a new pool record. 313.34, that was a new ah. pool record. They look exhausted. <laughs> That's Michael Pixton and Ben Martin and Nehemiah Moore. They look pretty tired. Well, another, another plaque comes down and new names go up. Well, that's what records are for. Records are meant to be broken. The final score of today's meet, Midland High, 44 and a half. Dow High, 136 and a half. Thank you very much for joining us. Yep, and there's that relay team. Congratulations, Midland High. Congratulations, Dow High. Great swimming tonight. Have a good night. Uh, the coverage of this swim meet is being produced by MCT volunteers and staff. If you'd like to work on a show like this one, come to the orientation slash studio training classes the second Saturday of most months from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Next session is on March 9th, and there's another session on May 11th. Learn more about MCTV, how to become a TV producer, and get hands-on training to become a volunteer. The cost is $45, which covers all the training. You can call 837-3474 for more details or stop in at the MCD, MCTV studios in the lower level of the Grace A. Dow Library. Or you can check out um, information on www.midland-mi.org slash MCTV or follow us on Facebook. We'd also like to thank all the volunteers from MCTV for putting the production on today and thank Subway at Saginaw, on Saginaw Road for uh, donations.